Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, bringing you some of the best college football news, predictions, and analysis. If you like offense, I've got the game for you. SMU will be taking on Florida Atlantic in the Boca Raton Bowl on Saturday afternoon, a game that was extremely underrated and will be a phenomenal way to kick off this very young 2019 postseason. This game features a battle between two 10-win teams, two surprising 10-win teams, as SMU has clinched double-digit wins for the first time since 1984, and if they win this game, will clinch an 11-win season for the first time since 1982. Florida Atlantic came off a 5-7 year last year and bounced back by winning the Conference USA and clinching a 10-win season, two years removed from going 11-3, where they also won the Conference USA back in 2017. So this is a phenomenal matchup. Two very good teams, two very good offenses, and of course plenty of drama that we will get into here shortly. But you look at this game, and I think a lot of people might be questioning, I, I say two 10-win teams, and they say, SMU goes 10-2. How do they not make the American Athletic Conference Championship game? is because they lost the two games that mattered most, falling to Memphis and to Navy. And as we all know, Memphis ended up going to the American Conference Championship game. They beat Cincinnati for the second time, and they are the highest-ranked Group of Five champion going into the postseason, meeting Penn State in the Cotton Bowl. It could have been SMU if they had taken care of business. But they lost the two games that mattered most. Will they drop a third? This game, the one that matters the most for the rest of the season, by finishing the year with momentum and finishing the year where they win in the postseason. We said if you like offense, this is the game for you because these two squads have very similar offenses. They are explosive, they are high scoring, and they love to air it out. SMU averaging 43 points per game, while Florida Atlantic right behind them at 35.2 points per game. So these guys know how to rack it up. These guys know how to have some fun and maybe run up the score a little bit. When you look at SMU and their offense, SMU probably the team you know a little bit more about than Florida Atlantic because, you know, the Mustangs, they were ranked at a handful of times this season. They beat TCU earlier in the year. They had a college game day matchup against Memphis back in November. Uh, they were in the mix for that group of five spot for a very, very long time. So you probably know more about them just because of their history, because of the biggest surprise, one of the biggest surprises in all of college football. But they are led by Shane Buchel, who has thrown for over 3,600 yards this season, 33 touchdowns, and just 9 interceptions. He has a great supporting cast around him. Xavier Jones at running back, rushed for over 1,200 yards this season and 21 touchdowns. And then he's got some great wide receivers, Reggie Roberson and James Prochet, over 1,100 receiving yards and 14 touchdowns this season. Those two guys have been his go-to targets. You shut down one, you're not going to shut down the other. So you shut down the passing game, you've got Xavier Jones at running back. I mean, SMU's offense is extremely difficult to stop. You see that by the amount of points they're scoring per game, and you see that from the talent and the stats that these guys have put up all season long. They're 10-2 and two for a reason. But you look at Florida Atlantic, guys, and how well they have played this year. They're led by sophomore quarterback Chris Robeson. So if he sticks around, which I expect he will, this Owls team could put up some big numbers down the road. Over 3,300 yards through the air this season. 26 touchdowns, just six interceptions. And he's got one of the better tight ends in all of college football. Probably a guy you haven't heard of. Harrison Bryant has over 1,000 receiving yards this season. Seven touchdowns for a tight end. Not a wide receiver, a tight end. He is a huge huge difference maker in this game against a somewhat vulnerable SMU defense. And we'll touch on that in a second. But once again, when you look at the numbers here, you look at SMU, I would say the Mustangs are much more explosive and maybe even high scoring than the Owls. But the one thing that Florida Atlantic does have going for them that SMU does not is that they are way more balanced. Florida Atlantic averaging 278.7 passing yards per game, 164.3 rushing yards per game. SMU, Xavier Jones has put up great numbers, but they rely heavily on Shane Buchel. And if you take him away, you can expect the offense to struggle just a little bit. 
Defensively, though, that is where Florida Atlantic holds the major edge. This is where this game will be decided. I can guarantee you that. In a game with prolific offenses, in a game that will probably be relatively high scoring, it's going to come down to which defense is, is going to get a stop. Which defense can force a late turnover? Which defense can get a force a punt? Which defense can make the play that's going to matter the most down the stretch? And right now, I'm saying that's Florida Atlantic, a team that's allowing just 22.3 points per game. 22.3 points per game. And they have a very, very dangerous secondary, guys. A secondary that's really going to test this passing attack from SMU. Florida Atlantic leads the nation, not just the Conference USA, not the Group of Five, the nation with 21 interceptions. They have a plus 20 turnover margin. And senior quarterback Miko Dotson leads the nation with nine interceptions. So nine of those 21 coming from Dotson. But regardless, this secondary and defense as a whole has played extremely well against some solid opponents that have passing attacks in the Conference USA. This will by far be their toughest test yet outside of their loss to Ohio State in the season opener. But this is going to be a very difficult test for the Florida Atlantic Owls in the secondary, but one that SMU cannot afford to overlook. They're going to be extremely tough. When you look at SMU's defense, I stressed how much Florida Atlantic owns the edge because it's true when you look at these numbers. SMU allowing 31.8 points per game, guys. Almost 32 points per game allowed. They allowed 30 points or more seven times this season. And some of those coming against inferior opponents that SMU should have blown out of the water, but did 37 points to Tulsa. 31 points to a weaker Houston squad than we've seen in recent years. 35 points to Navy. Very good team, top 25 team. Understandable, especially since, since it's the option. And then 51 points to East Carolina. That, is, that was kind of the tip of the iceberg for me. That was the one that just that just kind of ruined SMU for me. They, they follow up a, a loss against Memphis by beating ECU at SMU 59-51, to allowing the Pirates to put up that many points on your home turf. That showed me that this SMU defense isn't ready. That they just rely too much on their offense to bail them out. That, oh, it's okay if we allow a lot of points because our offense is going to do it. And if we get a turnover here or there, or if we get a stop, that might be all we need. Because our offense isn't going to slow down that much, and most defense aren't able to stop them. That's not going to be the case down in Boca Raton this Saturday afternoon. So, who is going to win this game? You know, I just bashed SMU a little bit. I was giving some credit to the Owls. Uh, but obviously, we said there was some drama. We said there was some drama that had to be addressed coming into this. And this is, of course... Florida Atlantic dealing with the loss of Lane Kiffin, who coached the team in the Conference USA Championship game, a 49-6 win over UAB, and shortly after that left for the SEC to go coach Ole Miss. So every year, this happens every year in the postseason. Coaches leave, coaches get fired, coaches get hired, and you wonder, how is the team going to respond? So in this scenario, how is Florida Atlantic going to respond with the loss of their coach? The fact that Florida Atlantic has already hired Willie Taggart as their brand new head coach. They know they've hired somebody else. Players are probably thinking about transferring or staying or what it's going to be like, but they're not going to be playing for him. They're going to be playing for an interim. So how are they going to respond? How, is it, how are they going to cope with this loss of their head coach? And I'm going to say they handle it just fine. I get it's a very tough situation. It's something that players don't like to go through, and it's something that could play a factor for Florida Atlantic and many other teams across the country in this postseason. But Florida Atlantic, this entire team knew that Lane Kiffin was going to leave when they played that Conference USA Championship game just about last week, two weeks ago. They knew he was gone. They didn't know where to, but they knew he wasn't staying. And that team showed up and beat UAB, a team that has one of the better defenses in the Conference USA beat them 49-6. to They dominated that game from start to finish, offensively, defensively, and on special teams. Then you look at this. This is also a home game for Florida Atlantic. They're playing a Boca Raton right in their backyard. This is their home turf. The last time Florida Atlantic had a game here in Boca Raton for a bowl game, they beat Akron 50-3. Now, I know it's Akron. I know SMU and Akron. You can't compare the two. I know you can't compare the two two years ago. I get that. But this is their home turf. 
Florida Atlantic plays extremely well. They've played well all season. The major edge for me is they got a slight home field advantage. They want to win for these seniors. And the defense, more than anything, is way better than SMU. And I expect them to show up, hone in on that passing game, get a couple stops. Those 21 interceptions they've had this season, expect that to improve to at least 22, if not 23 or more. And Florida Atlantic, I've got pulling off the upset down in Boca Raton. They don't annihilate them like they did Akron two years ago. But in a high-scoring affair, which defense is going to make a play? It's the Owls defense. And they win in the first game without Lane Kiffin. They win and clinch an 11-win season. Two years removed from yet another 11-win season. So a phenomenal job for what Lane Kiffin and the Owls have done this year, but an even better job for the Owls for keeping their composure and getting a win down in Boca Raton on Saturday afternoon. So guys, thank you for watching us here on YouTube. Make sure to like this video and check out everything we have for you in the description below. You can get the spread picks for this Boca Raton Bowl as well as every other spread pick for every other bowl game over at thegridironexpert.com as well as receive other offers and college football content by the links in the description below. So don't miss out on that. And once again, thank you for watching. Please continue to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time on The Gridiron Expert.